Hello, this is A.J. Lamb, and this is my first of two readings of the story of Aditha. This section of the story will come at the very beginning of the story itself. The air was thick with the war feeling, like the electricity of a storm which has not yet burst. Aditha sat looking out into the hot spring afternoon with her lips parted and panting with the intensity of the question whether she could let him go. She had decided that she could not let him stay when she saw him at the end of the still leafless avenue, making slowly up toward the house with his head down and his figure relaxed. She ran impatiently out onto the veranda to the edge of the steps and imperatively demanded greater haste of him with her will before she could call a, before she called aloud to him. George! He had quickened his pace in mystical response to her mystical urgence before he could have heard her. Now he looked up and answered, Well, oh, how united we are, she exalted, and then she swooped down the steps to him. What is it? she cried. It's war, he said, and he pulled her up to him and kissed her. She kissed him back intensely, but irrelevantly, as to their passion, and uttered from deep in her throat, How glorious! It's war, he repeated without consenting to her sense of it. And she did not know just what to think at first. She never knew what to think of him. That made his mystery, his charm, all through their courtship, which was contemporaneous with the growth of the war feeling. She had been puzzled by his want of seriousness about it. He seemed to despise it even more than he abhorred it. She could have understood him abhorring any sort of bloodshed. That would have been a survival of his old life when he thought he would be a minister and before he changed and took up the law. But making light of a cause so high and noble seemed to show a want of earnestness at the core of his being. Not but that she felt herself able to cope with the congenital defect of that sort, and make his love for her save him from himself.